Just over three years ago, Pope Francis made a visit, a pastoral visit to the United States, and he addressed a joint session of Congress. In his talk, he highlighted four Americans, Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., the Cistercian monk, monk Thomas Merton, and Dorothy Day. Regarding Dorothy Day, Pope Francis began, in these times when social concerns are so important, I cannot fail to mention the servant of God, Dorothy Day, who founded the Catholic Worker Movement. Her social activism, her passion for justice, and for the cause of the oppressed were inspired by the gospel, her faith, and the example of the saints. Dorothy Day was born in Brooklyn in 1897. She lived briefly in Oakland, California when she was a little girl until in 1906 when the great San Francisco earthquake struck and her father's place of employment was totally destroyed and they moved to Chicago where she grew up. After college at the University of Illinois, she moved to New York where she lived most of her life. She died in 1980 of a heart attack at the age of 83 in her small apartment above Mary House, the Catholic Worker House, a soup kitchen and house of hospitality in Manhattan's East Side Village. And she had founded that Mary House in the early 1930s. In the year 2000, the Archdiocese of New York submitted her cause to the Vatican that they declare her a saint. In remarks at that time, Cardinal John O'Connor described her as a journalist, an activist, a pacifist. She championed the poor, embraced poverty, and worked for social change in a way that made many people uncomfortable. She was a radical precisely because she was a believer. If any woman ever loved God and her neighbor, the Cardinal said it was Dorothy Day. Saint Pope John Paul II accepted and gave permission to open her cause for sainthood, granting her the title Servant of God. In today's gospel, the crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? John, who led a radical lifestyle, who was a convinced believer, a herald of the coming of Jesus, a man who loved God and his neighbor, gave them some very practical advice. Share your extra food and clothes with the starving and the naked. To the tax collectors, do not rob people. Just collect what you're entitled to and no more. To the soldiers, do not abuse your power or intimidate people. In other words, for us today, do what we know we should be doing. Be generous, kind, and compassionate. Share with the needy. Form healthy relationships. Be hospitable, kind, and welcoming to guests, strangers, and immigrants. We've heard similar words many times and in many different ways. For example, in Matthew 25, whatever we do or don't do to the least ones, we do or don't do to Jesus. In the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, the meek, the merciful. And in the words of the prophet Micah, do what is right, love goodness, and walk humbly with God. Rejoice, Paul proclaims in our second reading. Your kindness should be known to all. Rejoice, the Lord is near. Last week, we also heard John the Baptist calling us to conversion, a change of heart. We heard that John proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Make the winding paths of our lives straight. Fill in the valleys of discontent and despair. Smooth out the bumpiness of sin in our lives. 
Modern society can be an obstacle to conversion. There are a lot of attractive, tempting things that can easily lead us down many crooked paths and dark valleys. Dorothy Day's autobiography is called The Long Loneliness. By its very title, it hints that her story of conversion was a struggle, and in her early life was anything but a smooth path. Once described as the original hippie, Dorothy Day experimented with everything life had to offer when she was young. She drank, had several affairs, and had a daughter out of wedlock before she embraced the Catholic faith at age 30. The reality is many saints lead dissolute lives before they had a conversion and turn to the Lord Jesus. In February of 2013, Pope Benedict cited Dorothy Day as an example of conversion, the turning away from past deeds and habits, saying, the journey towards faith in such a secularized environment was particularly difficult for Dorothy Day, but grace acts nonetheless. Grace acts nonetheless. How blessed we are that God loves us and gives us his grace to do good things, to avoid evil, and draw us to holiness. I know many times I fail to do all that our Lord asks us to do, to accomplish all the good things that we are supposed to do. And when that happens, it's because of me. I'm putting an obstacle before his grace. God will never force us to accept his grace, but we must always try to be open to his will and lovingly accept his grace and strive with his help to do the good. On Monday, the priests of the deanery will be at the cathedral hearing confessions all day long. Perhaps that is an occasion for God's grace as we prepare for Christmas. Near the end of her life, Dorothy Day wrote, the older I get, the more I meet people, the more convinced I am that we must only work on ourselves to grow in grace. The only thing we can do about people is to love them. The final word is love. 